Arlene Phillips. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good morning or lunchtime or whatever it is. I'm well. Exactly, whatever it is. Whereabouts are you in the world? I'm in London. You're in London. I'm in Cardiff and we're getting some lovely sunny weather. Um, so I won't I won't keep you too long. Are you getting the same weather in London? I'm afraid not at the moment. It's looking uh, remarkably dull. Uh, so, well, we, we had that yesterday. So, so you know, it, it's only fair. <laughs> OK, share and share. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Arlene, of course, today we are not chatting about the weather. We are chatting, uh, of course, about um, being a grandparent. Now, this is actually a really interesting topic because, you know, my both my parents um, work at strange hours in the day. So when I when I was younger, my uh, dad would work nights and my mum would work in the day and there would always be kind of this middle point where you'd see either one parent or the other. But for me, I would spend every day kind of with my grandparents. So they were such a sort of integral part of my life. I, I understand you have two grandchildren, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. One, Emmy is nearly six months old and Lila is two, two and a half years old. Mm -hmm. and, and kind of why do you think it's so important that we, we do spend time with our, our grandparents? Oh, I think grandparents are an invaluable part of life. You are, you are the extended family. You are there to give them love, to give them hugs, to, to show them that beyond their parents, there's this loving support. And you teach them, I think, about family and the meaning of family. Um, and I th often think in our very busy lives where so many families have both parents working, the importance of an extended family um, in terms of well-being and protection and that extra love that mm. could never, never go amiss. Yeah. Vital to our lives. And I think the pandemic has taught us that. We've been forced apart, not by choice, and being forced apart, the coming back together has been so precious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, I, I completely agree. And I think that the pandemic has made us appreciate that simple thing of going to see our grandparents a little bit more simply because that was taken away from us, if you get me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and kind of uh, this is the thing that I, I feel I feel like such a, a cynic saying it. But like when um, I was younger, you know, a little bit younger, although we had things like PlayStations and things like this, technology was in no way like it was today. So do you think kind of that has had a knock on effect on the way we potentially would spend time with our grandparents? Is that you see a lot of children on phones these days and social media and things like that. And I, I think that kind of almost takes away the the kind of the, 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 the enjoyment of being with your grandparents? Yeah, I think that with, with children now, you know, life is doing what they have to do and then any spare moment is picking up the phone and playing a game or, or keeping them occupied. Mm. But actually, people skills and grandparents are the ones that can teach them people skills, teach them how important that physical contact is, how important to use the imagination, how important to share a book, how important those things are. And it's that time that gets so taken up by being on a mobile phone or some, some game that, you know, essentially it's so easy to say, yeah, but it's teaching them to count. Yeah, but they know all their, they know their alphabet already, or they look at what they can do. Of course, it's wonderful. And children are growing up to be smarter and cleverer than ever. Mm. But also we have to appreciate human beings and grandparents are the perfectly pitched to do that because they love they have for these children and what they can show them or teach them or give them you can't you can't money can't buy it mm -hmm. only buy it yeah no I, I completely agree and um the other thing I I, I noticed as well so my, my my grandmother unfortunately she passed away uh, last November after a kind of long battle with dementia but when oh. a, a grandparent kind of passes away you realize kind of how much of an impact they have had on your life um simply because you know certain things my nana would do 
uh, and my grampy would do, I will now do the same sort of thing. And I, I kind of have, you know, certain tastes we all like and, and certain things that we've been brought up to kind of things which are so small at the time. But now you go back and you realize that, oh, my God, like I'm now quite fussy about kind of the, the sausages and the bacon that I buy in various shops and things like that. And I'm now <laughs> a little bit kind of uh, prudent about certain things. So kind of it, I think grandparents can have such a huge impact on grandchildren. Yes, they instill in the child values. You can call them old fashioned values, but they are there. Mm. And, and I think giving them the foundation and the, the, the sort of extended love is, is, I think, what is important. And, you know, grandparents do provide the treats you know of with the research i've been involved with with um raisin looking at a how many hours grandparents spend with the children but also that on average they spend about 450 pounds a year on their grandchildren either in savings or giving them the gift or tucking some money into their pocket there there are things that grandparents do i have been remarkably um I, th I feel that I spoil my children. I grew up very, with a very, very poor background. I was one of those children that was always wanting or um, hoping to get. Um, so with my children, I thought, I don't want them to go through what I have gone through. But actually, I've come to realize a little bit of hardship and not getting everything you want does no harm whatsoever. In fact, it makes you think about the importance of money and the value of money. No, yeah, no, yeah, uh, that, 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 I mean, that is so true as well. And, and you kind of, uh, uh, you know, I address my upbringing and things like that and things that I would have wanted as a child. I'm almost happy I didn't have them now because it sort of instilled that kind of, um, you know, it, mean, it means that I'm not constantly wanting something, you know, and con I, I know that no is, uh, is an answer. Um, so yeah. kind of with this research, kind of the research you've done with Raisin, well, why, why did you want to do this? Why did you find, want to find out a little bit more kind of uh, about this kind of thing? I wanted to get involved because I, over the pandemic, one of the things that I thought about is I never knew what it was like to be, you know, or thought about, I was going to be 70. I wasn't going to be working. I wasn't going to be earning money. And I started to think that if I hadn't put money away over my lifetime, I, I couldn't have got through this pandemic. I didn't work a day, not a day. Mm -hmm. But luckily I just had, had some savings that I could get through. Um, and so the importance of saving was really brought home to me the, because we are living longer lives and we may get sick, we may need to go in a home. We can't, you know, we can't constantly rely on there will always be money there. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get involved because I've, I really have thought about what saving means and how we have to get back to really thinking about it. We're not encouraged by it any longer because there is literally no interest. You can put money away and actually your money is going down. Mm. And we need encouragement. The banks, the government, we need to be encouraged to save because we're going to need it. Yeah, and it, and it's forward planning, isn't it? It's uh, it's kind of prepping prepping for the future. Um, Ar Arlene, this was a really interesting interview for me because simply because um, me and my nana used to watch Strictly all the time, like every Saturday, oh. it was religious. We we'd always watch it in the house. Um, so uh, from you, I, I have to ask you this question: um, if if I were to, uh, if we weren't judging my dancing, but my interviewing skills, uh, what what would you rank me out of ten? <laughs> Well, I think you've been a, a fabulous interviewer. Mm -hmm. And right now, you would be getting nine and a half. Nine and a half. Well, always room for improvement. Arlene Phillips from all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lovely to talk to you. Lovely to chat to you, Arlene.